Podcast. Oh, why can't you just leave a negative a, a relationship? There's energetics to this, you know, and we we step into a pattern and that comfort pattern and that's how we function. And it's in that pattern, which is very important that we actually learn the things that we need to learn through that soul contract. When it starts to become excruciatingly uncomfortable, we start to become aware of the discomfort. That's when observation will help us to see exactly what we're supposed to do and when we're supposed to do it. Welcome, beautiful souls, to season three of the Cosmic Love Antenna with your host, Harrison Ma. I invite you on a mystical voyage from the intellect to the soul, delving deep into the mysteries of love's spiritual essence and its divine unfolding. This podcast celebrates the peeling back of heart layers, revealing beautiful, profound lessons, interviews with loving spiritual seekers, and practices and tools to open up your heart to love's infinite wisdom. I'm so excited to have you and grateful that our hearts have connected. Enjoy the show. Good morning, evening, afternoon, mystical, powerful beings. Welcome back to the show and another loving spiritual deep dive today into a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. And I also know is very near and dear to the beautiful guest, the returning guest that I get to have a chat with today. Before I get back to her loving heart and her powerful soul, a reminder for all the new beings tuning into the chat today. If you are returning, we love you. If you're new, we also love you. <laughs> Remember that you can Share this episode out far and wide. If you get a bit of value, send it to a lover, a friend, a family member. If you get some tidbits, some pieces on your heart that can help you expand, you can leave your comments, reviews over on Apple and Spotify. And I encourage you to listen to the end of this chat today because we're going to be getting into all the deep diving elements around cord cutting. And that is really the topic we're going to hit on today. I have here returning guest, the beautiful Isabel Maxwell. She's a spiritual coach, a powerful intuitive medium, and the founder of the Sage Method. With her help today, we're going to go into all things cord cutting. What are cords? <laughs> what does this mean? What are the tools, the tips, the the methods behind this? Why this is important if you are a powerful spiritual being? And so much more. Isabel, welcome back to the show, my friend. Thank you for having me back. I love this. It's it's kind of like, can we just be in this energy all the time? Can we can we do this all the time? Right. <laughs> it's uh, I I joke about it. I think I maybe I've joked about it with you before, but it's when I drop into this space, especially with someone like you, my friend. It, it reminds me of, oh, this is this is what this is what I am. This is, this is my, this is my essence. And, and maybe I can get your thoughts on this. This is just coming up. But when I jump back out into the, into the world, I find it's so easy to put on masks, right? Put on different layers to help me. What's the word? I don't want to say connect, but fit in. Do you, does that yeah. resonate with you, my friend? Resonates deeply. Deeply. I spent many, many years wearing masks and, uh, you know, fitting in and doing what I thought I was supposed to do and don't make anyone uncomfortable. And yeah, it resonates with me deeply. I'm grateful that most of my path now I can walk without a mask. Mm. I think that's the goal. That's the goal. Well, a big part of that is this topic we're talking about today, right? Cutting cords and being mindful of these energetic attachments that we we pick up along that path. So knowing us is where I think we're going to get really deep super quick. So let's <laughs> let's let's start off surface level just for people to have some foundation and then we'll go deep. So I'm going to make it very simple and throw you the question here. How would you define an energetic cord. An energetic cord is like shared space required. It's like a contract that's happened between you and another person in your soul group. 
and it ignites, it sets, it connects, and it holds on for the time that it needs to hold on. So it's it's tethering yourself energetically. And I don't mean that in any negative form, but tethering yourself energetically to another soul. Mm. So what would you, how would you describe the difference if there is one? Because it sounds like they're very synonymous, but what's the difference between a soul contract and a energetic cord? The soul contract really is the purpose. It's the agreed upon purpose before we have ever come down. And the cord is the device. The cord is uh, the magnetic connection the mechanism. in this agreed upon reality. Mm, that's a beautiful distinction. I asked that because <laughs> within this spiritual conversation that we're having and that we've had in the past, I find myself getting lost in the lexicon of words, right? I, I find myself getting lost in all the different uh, you know, terminologies as the ones we're talking about here today. And while I think it's important to have definitions so the mind can feel comfortable, at the same time, I think those definitions, we don't want to get stuck in them, right? We want to use them, which is what, what you just described, right? And it made me feel comfortable. But I would encourage people listening to, you know, take a definition that resonates with you. But then even if it if there is still some confusion, I would still surrender through it anyway, surrender to the thing behind it. Does that, do you resonate with that, my friend? 100%. When I first started walking this path, I remember initially feeling like I wish there was a dictionary that went along with spirituality that could tell me exactly what everything was. And now here I am years into it and I realize I'm glad there's not a dictionary. And I teach very much how you describe. I will teach in the sense of describing things in form, analogies, symbolism, but I, I work hard to make sure everyone knows this is just a way to describe it so our brain can wrap around it. It really isn't solid anyway. Most everything that we discuss in spirituality isn't in the agreed upon yeah. reality. It's not solid. Yeah. So to label it would be to limit it. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good t-shirt right there. To label it, <laughs> to limit it. <laughs> Let's start a t-shirt company. Oh, I, it would be great. We're going to have and to, my friend, with these episodes. We are. And then we'll sell shirts that that people, they'll read it and they'll just know. Yeah. They'll be like, yep. Yep. Well, I got that. The t-shirts will come with the frequency. So they'll read it. Yeah. They'll know. I'm like, <laughs> oh, they'll be hit with like a, a light channel. Um, <laughs> I want to get back to what you said about wanting a dictionary. And I resonate with that. But I think there's a, you know, a deeper layer to it is, the part of us that wants a dictionary is also the part that doesn't have the dictionary. And what I mean by that is the thing that wants the definition is often the mind. And I've found within that journey of wanting to find the, the, the literal answers, I've come back to the answers within a dictionary that's been in my heart the whole time, right? So the mind gets lost and then maybe finds some solace but then we realize, oh, wait, I never needed to ask that question because the answer was in my heart to begin with. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's returning to the soul. It's returning to the spirit, which already knows all of this. Yeah, that's it. So let's, so with that definition of a, a chord and, and the soul contract with, it, again, this definition that is still a bit loose, but we have some foundation here. Let's let's go deeper. So why, in your opinion, my friend, why is it important to be aware of these chords? Why is it important to be aware of these, these, these mechanisms that are, that are, that are stemming from the soul contract? To be aware of them is to understand them and then be able to utilize them at a depth that you can't, if you're not aware of them. Now, with that said, you can absolutely go through life completely unaware of your soul contracts and the energetic cords. It's all going to continue to happen 
anyway. It's a matter of fine tuning your spiritual path and being able to see when it's time to shed things because as beautiful and as perfect as spirituality is, the second you integrate it into the agreed upon reality, it gets bumpy, meaning we can make a soul contract before we ever come down. But when we're here and the actual cord energetically connects us, we have a little bit of that free will, that human stubbornness, and we might hold onto the cord longer than we're supposed to. So when we step out of spirituality and into humanity, we step into imperfection. And by doing that, it's the awareness that's going to help us. Meaning if we were in the spiritual realms, we wouldn't even need awareness around it. It just is. But here to have awareness is to be able to navigate it with more peace and more comfort. Mm. I could listen to you all day, my friend. Um, but I, I just want to go back to that. You said bumpy. And I think that is the understatement of the, of the century right there. I think if, <laughs> if all these chords yep. were just bumpy, I think we probably wouldn't be needing to have this conversation. And I, and what I, and what I'm alluding to here is that I know for me, my energetic chords, you know, they've caused me deep pain, right? They've caused me deep uh, you know, and this is the next question I'm going to ask you here, but they usually come with a lot of, you know, suppressed emotion, suppressed anger, guilt, shame, resentment, judgment. And when we move through that, and I'll just give an example here, I had a beautiful experience with the, one of these chords with my dad last night. And it was actually one of the first times I didn't get lost in the in the emotion that came with it. And I was just observing, observing the denseness of the emotion that was moving through me based off the chord that I have with him. And it was just, it's just <laughs> it was just so dense. It was so it was a lot of judgment, a lot of resentment, a lot of, you know, a bit of anger. So with this example, my friend, I'm wondering how how can we start to know that one of these cords, you know, needs to be cut or needs to, we need to bring that loving awareness to it. What are, in your opinion, what are some ways that we can, you know, characterize these, these cords that need some deeper awareness? You've, you've already really summarized it, which is beautiful. It's observation. Observation is, is one of the most powerful tools when it comes to, deciding whether it's time to cut a cord or not. When we are connected energetically to another, first off, when the cord connects, because it, we don't, we're not necessarily born with it. It might come in when we're 22, when we're 47, et cetera, et cetera. When that energetic cord connects, when the soul contract begins, there is an added energy infused into your system because now you're sharing an energy that's passing through this cord. So if I was to connect with an individual and, and the cord connection started, the soul contract started, most likely wouldn't be overly aware of it unless it was really obvious. But that energy now, I have a new energy that I have access to and that is also um, sharing space with my energy. That's going to change how I see things, how I approach things, how I react to things. And it's going to uh, open me up to different viewpoints and experiences and emotions, et cetera, et cetera. When we connect with another through a cord, that connection becomes comfortable, whether it be positive or negative, that connection becomes comfortable. We've always heard, you know, a critic's yeah, a critic say, oh, why can't you just leave a negative a, a relationship? There's energetics to this, you know, and we we step into a pattern and that comfort pattern and that's how we function. And it's in that pattern, which is very important that we actually learn the things that we need to learn through that soul contract. When it starts to become excruciatingly uncomfortable, we start to become aware of the discomfort that's when observation will help us to see exactly what we're supposed to do and when we're supposed to do it. Mm. There's so many extra little questions bubbling up. I love this. So <laughs> I want to ask you your opinion on this. Is the, 
is the cord, is the energetic connection or the soul contract, is it just with a specific soul or slash and is it with a specific pattern in that soul? So, for example, um, I'll use my dad as an example. Um, if I'm within the soul contract with my dad, I need to understand the relationship to anger. Is is that is that energetic cord the anger connection, or is it the anger within my dad specifically? It is the energy within your dad that invites your anger. It's probably the best way to word that. Yeah. And we can have close relationships where we don't have energetic cords. Uh, the energetic, when you have a, a soul contract and there's an energetic cord, there's a purpose. There's a purpose. And it's <laughs> it's the individual that will push your buttons or be your biggest cheerleader. Those are usually the the standard chords. And you can only get your button pushed so many times before you say, okay, that's enough. And that's the growth that that chord was bringing you. And then in the observation phase, you can see, you start to see the energy coming in and you start to identify the energy and you start to adjust to how you respond to that energy instead of reacting to that energy. Now you're functioning more from a spiritual base instead of a human base. And we can continue to have these individuals in our lives even after we cut that cord. It's kind of like saying, thank you. Uh, I I now am completely aware and I have grown and I now understand uh, what this energy was bringing me. And when we can evaluate how we now respond as we walk through this, this earth in connection to what this person, this gift that this person gave us, even though it was frustrating gift sometimes, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Then you no longer need the cord. You don't need to be infused with that mm. energy in so order you, to spark you. Do you know what so, I mean? Yeah, I do. So you would define the cutting of the cord as the integration and the completion of the lesson that needs to be learned around it. I love that. Yes. Yeah, yes. I love that. And it doesn't necessarily mean the person has to leave your life. No. It yeah. just means that the contract's done. Yeah. This is interesting because and I've I've fall I've fell into this belief and I think a lot of people listening too is that most of us would view the cutting of cords as that just sort of putting a line in the sand and maybe ignoring the energetics. And I think that that can be a part of it because we have free will. And I think this is probably where the, the multiple lifetimes and karma comes in, right? It, it, it'll come back again just so we can make sure we have that lesson. But I think the more expansive view of cutting cords here is, you know, learning the thing, integrating the lesson, understanding the energetics of it in your words, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Understanding those energetics is the whole purpose of the cord. And observation first, awareness second, um, you know, any sort of adjustments that you need, but to incorporate what you've learned, what you've gained, what you've understood is, is stepping into a space where you no longer need the cord. Mm, I love it. So let's shift here now a little bit into another question within this world because this is something that i practice when i connect into these chords and i think this adds a little bit more nuance to them and can actually give us more guidance around them and it is the incorporation of the chakra system into into these energetic chords and connecting different energy centers to a specific soul contract so I'm wondering your thoughts, my friend, how do you, if, if you do, how do you incorporate the chakra system into this cord cutting conversation? If I was to integrate uh, chakras into this, I would say, where's the cord attached? I think that that would be the most, the most logical. Each of these centers really push a different button. Do you know what I mean? It really hits at a different spot. Uh, if someone was, if you were to have a soul contract with somebody and the cord 
the purpose of the cord connection was to silence you until such point as you no longer would be silenced, that would obviously go right into that throat chakra, right? If you were to have a cord uh, connection with an individual who financially um, almost destroyed you, right? That would most likely go into that root chakra, that foundation. So the challenge is going to resonate in different energy fields and different vibrations. Thus, it's going to resonate in different chakras. Yeah, I think you nailed that. And what I'd add to this is what it allows us to do. And I think this is this adds more to the the movement through the cord cutting, the movement through the soul contract is it brings in the physical body, but specifically brings in the senses of feeling and and touch and sense and sensation and as you as we've already alluded to and we'll get into this more later but that in itself is a tool right because when you drop into your body and you drop into sensation where are you you're in the present and if you're in the present you're now able to bring conscious awareness to the energetic cord and the soul contract and thus the lesson that needs to be learned would you do you agree with that my friend Oh yeah, absolutely. To be able to, in essence, what you're talking about is is connecting with all three of your bodies, with mm. the spiritual body, with that programmed body, with that mind, and with the physical body. To be able to observe all three is is really one of the best states to be. Mm. And it, I found that when I have an energetic cord, so like you said, with the throat, for example, you don't just have to intellectually think about that you could probably you'd most likely in that moment feel it in that throat center i know i do right when i have a a cord around my uh, you know expression you know my throat will close up i'll literally have a physical symptom based off that energetic cord so it's it's really learning to if we can get more specialized and nuanced then we can get to the more specialized and nuanced nuanced lesson that needs to be expressed and i think that's a really big role of the of the chakra system it is. I, I, I think I naturally used the throat chakra for my first one because one of the largest obstacles for me was my relationship with my mother and it was all throat chakra. Now, mind you, this happened before I opened up intuitively and I was able to heal this before I opened up intuitively or had any awareness of spirituality. So that's a positive. Like I said, it's going to happen regardless. Um, the healing process took longer than I think it would have if I would have been spiritually uh, awake and and aware, but that's okay. We all go through what we, what we go through. And I recall uh, years of having a uh, pain that would resonate down uh, f- from my ear and down into my throat. And it would be brutally painful to swallow. And I remember going to the doctor, I was in my mid twenties and I remember going to the doctors over and over and over again. And finally they told me, okay, go to this specialist, the specialist right when the pain is happening. And I went to, to the ear, nose and throat specialist during the pain and they said there is absolutely nothing wrong there's nothing wrong and i was dumbfounded by it back then i'm not now it's it's not surprising that was my body yelling at me hey right you need to get through this and uh i now can look back and i can see when i stepped into therapy when i stepped into healing when i stepped into those things that subsided back then i didn't put that together today i would have But yeah, our body is going to, it's going to react, especially if we extend that cord connection long past really what it needs to be. And that's the, that's the point there is in many ways, the body keeps score. The body tells the story of our lives and the body is the last place. The physical body is the last place, a emotional, energetic, and spiritual challenge shows up. Right. But, you know, just to give some compassion to that beautiful practitioner, right. And I know you know this, but just for people out there, you know, we only know what we know. Right. And I think, and it's changing. This world is changing at the moment in terms of the holistic understanding of our being. But I think your situation, my friend, with that, that professional looking at you and not really understanding the energetics, I think that's more common than not. Right. I think that's why 
I really get excited to have conversations with you because we're expanding this knowledge base to incorporate all of this, right? Um, I want to, a question that came up as you're explaining about your mum and the cord cutting that you did and the energetics. I speak a lot about, and I think we talked about last in our last chat, but I speak a lot about on this show, the ancestral healing effect and how when we do something within our being, any anything within the spiritual conversation, it impacts forwards and backwards down the ancestral line. So I'm wondering, I kind of know the answer, but I want to hear you, I want to hear you talk speak about it. Did you notice once you cut that cord with with her and you did your work, did you see that impact her? I I did not because I'm not witness to it. Mm. So uh that cord cut was a final cord. And in that particular situation, we weren't able to continue the the human relationship. Um, So I wasn't able to witness that. So I don't know. But I do know I have I have two grown children now. And the cord was cut when they were. um, I want to say 10, 12, somewhere around there. And I, as a mother, joyously got to witness um, the, 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 their energy just uh, became changed. more free. Yeah, it changed. It became more. Um, Can I ask what the cord was that you that you moved through with them? Uh, explain what you mean. So you said when the cord was cut with your children, what can I ask what that what that involved? Uh, when the cord was cut between me and my mother. Oh, it impacted you saying it impacted your yeah. children. Oh, cool. It Keep impacted going. my children. Yeah. Um, and to put this in perspective, my children at the ages of 10, 11, and I think 12, 13 was around where they were. They're very close in age. To put this in perspective, they were very comfortable with that decision. So yeah, so it wasn't um it wasn't a, a sad moment at all. It was actually a moment of a deep sigh of relief. And yet release. Um, and they were a little bit happier, a little bit goofier, a little bit more free to be adventurous. They were um, all of those things. And I know that part of that had to be my energetic system was a little happier, a little free to be a little bit more, you know, I can do, I, you know, I'm, I can do what I want to do and say what I want to say and, and express myself in the ways that I want to express myself. And that instantly, that instantly shown through with the kids. And it was a role model situation. Really? It was all right, let's go play. Let's go, let's go laugh and let's go smile. Let's go have some fun and play. So it was a really wonderful thing. Um, I personally am an only child, so I didn't see any resonating. I couldn't experience any resonating situations with siblings. Um, And, you know, it wasn't necessarily a family line issue either. Like I would have put my grandmother in a very different situation. But what one thing I do know is, and I feel very strongly about this. I, my mother and I have been in almost every single life together. And I do know I hold a very deep love and respect for her. So we are, we are in essence, soulmates. And I know that kind of bucks the system and it bucks that spiritual dictionary that we talked about. Right. But, but it's very true. And I would not be right here doing all of this amazing work and living the amazing life I'm living without her. Yeah. That that soul core, that contract was a good one. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, my friend. I felt like mm-hmm. there was a there was a bit more to that. And I think that really highlights something beautiful that I want to ask you about here is this relationship to these energetic cords and these these standard contracts and soulmates. So let's let's maybe get into this now because I think this is another word <laughs> within the spiritual community that there's probably just as many definitions as, as there is practitioners of the word itself. So how, and you, you kind of defined it within your, your example, but let's, let's go into it a little bit. And I, I'll just add, I've seen it. I've seen the, this idea of 
energetic cords and standard contracts and soulmate contracts, they sort of blend together and they they bring in, that we attract our soulmates through these energetic cords. So how would you define the relationship between a cord that we need to bring awareness around and soulmates coming into our lives? Soulmates, you wouldn't necessarily have an energetic cord with a soulmate. Mm -hmm. uh, you might, you very well might. But a cord, an energetic cord and a contract is the two of you are, you are in the ditch together <laughs> and you're going to together learn how to get out of that ditch and, uh, and move forward. So if there is a soul contract, then there is something to be overcome, to learn, to, um, to adjust and to incorporate into your human path. So the soul contract brings you that guidance on your human path. And that can happen in the soulmate relationship too, right? Absolutely. So yeah. a soulmate can both be a soulmate and a soul contract at yeah. the same time, yeah. but they don't, they're not necessarily one in the same. Yes. So I have a soulmate actually, um, my best friend, as a matter of fact, she is the light of my life but I don't have anything to learn from her. She doesn't have anything to learn from me. We don't have any adjustments that we need to make uh, as a result of each other coming into each other's lives. Um, there's really no. And that's interesting, Isabel, just to interrupt you, sorry, but that's interesting because that, what that tells me, and I want to get your thoughts on this. What that tells me is that it's either, that means it's either a very fresh you know, very fresh uh, soul connection, or it's a pre-existing, a very old connection that you've been around multiple times, and you've worked out all your shit. You've worked out all the all the lessons, and you've incorporated all the things that these souls need to sort of, um, can, you know, give each other. And now you're just sort of being in the connection itself. Would you agree with that? I would, in a sense, I would, I have a tendency to pull away from linear time. Mm -hmm. I'll be very, very direct <laughs> talk, with that. We talked about this last time, I remember. That. I know, you know me, you know me. And when you remove linear time, which is on the other side, so we're here in linear time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, on the other side, we don't have it. And when we are on the other side and there isn't linear time, it means that all of our lives here are all happening at once. So I tend to challenge the idea of lining them up back to back, like in this whole learning concept, because we're not here to learn. When we do learn in this lifetime, it's the experience of learning that we're here for, but not necessarily growth to go into the next one. So I see different souls being closest to us on the other side in our soul group. So those that are the closest to us, I mean, we could say in proximity, but we've already talked about form, right? Those souls that are closest to us, each of them have a purpose. And if I had to line this up, two of the souls that are closest to me, one is my mother, one is my best friend. My mother's purpose in every single life, as I start from scratch in each one, because all lives are happening at the same time, my mother's purpose in every single life is to challenge me, is to just, you know, like the thumb on the tail of, of the little mouse going, you can't go anywhere <laughs> until the mouse finally takes off and then takes off in a grand way. That's my relationship with her. But the other soulmate that I have on the other side, our connection and being soulmates is literally really to have fun in each of these. It, it, it really, that there's not much more of that. I mean, and that's a purpose in itself. So I, I look at it as not learning together or growing together over lifetimes, but instead what is our purpose for each what's, other? What's the, what's the flavor? What's the flavor? What's the flavor? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Are yeah. you my antagonist? Yes. Are you my, you know, like, what are you going to be in this novel? And if we look at each life as a novel, all the novels are written at the same time. Yeah. So this, this brings up an interesting question that I want to test you with here. And it's more of a curiosity because, because we're in the deepness now, like I promised, and you've stimulated this from this idea of, uh, non-linear time, which is, which I agree with, but then this question comes up that sort of, you know, goes up against it. And I think 
that the soul contract, these cutting cords really plays a role in this. So you said that we're not here, we're here to experience, but not here to learn, correct? So where do you, if you see this as factoring in, where do you see the expansion process coming in, the evolution process coming in? Does that, how does that play a role if there is no learning within all of this, just the experience itself, which again, I would, I would agree from the perspective of, in my opinion, we are all, we are all expressions of a one source or, and that source being God or love, I would call it. And love is here to experience love. So that's how I would factor that into your, um, your perspective. But then where that does again, evolution and expansion come into this, this uh, worldview, my friend. So I just want to make sure that I'm I'm hearing this um, correctly. So you're talking about the worldview, like the world. Well, no, your, when I say worldview, your view, your view of this of non non linear time and not here to learn, just here to experience. Is how does evolution play into this? Evolution of the soul, evolution of the collective, evolution of you know uh, all the people involved. So when we look at this globally, mm -hmm. right, if you were to take every one of your lives and uh, separate them out on a table in front of you, every single one of them would start somewhere and end somewhere. That's the only evolution that really matters. And it, it's, it's, the, it's the timeline within the life that really is the most impactful. We can't experience I couldn't experience adventure if I wasn't held back from adventure. Right. So that's the duality. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the experience of, and, and I wouldn't know that I am out here traveling and adventuring across the country right now. I wouldn't be able to relate that to something magnificent if I wasn't held back from it earlier. So it, we have to have learning. We have to have growth. Because the experience stems from the learning. You know, you don't know what it is here, but now you know what it is. But now you only know what it is because you didn't know what it was before. So it's the uncovering of each moment that we're hungry for, really. And over time, over all of time, while I'm still proactive for um, earth-based, you know, causes and things like this. Absolutely. 100%. I got grandbabies coming, I hope. And <laughs> while I'm still proactive in all of that, in essence, this lifetime is really based on where we started and where we ended up. I mean, governments will make decisions. For example, I'm 49. I'm old enough to know what that was like when I was 15, right? So I see this experience in a different light. You have somebody else currently today, 22 years old, for example, same government decisions made, they're going to feel differently about it than I do. So everyone's lifetime is an experience in itself. I it's where you start and where you end. <laughs> so many more questions are bubbling up but i'll, I'll just add because <laughs> this is uh, you are such a wealth of knowledge my friend and this is this is testing some of my perspectives so it's interesting i i had this question then we'll get back to some of the other we'll come back to the surface level of the chords within that moment of that life experience from your perspective because all of the all of the lives have happened in 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 this moment can that can that person open up to a decision they've made so in a past life so i guess what i'm trying to get at here is let's say i i've had a i'll use an example of mine i've uncovered some mystical abilities that are originating from a time experienced in atlantis and within that same situation that you were just took the example that you gave of a government control system and we're trying to make some choices within your perspective how would the access of let's use clairvoyance as a as a as a mystical ability unlocked in a past life in atlantis 
how would that factor in within that moment if my past lives are not linear? Does that question make sense? I, I'm i almost there. It's me yeah. trying to catch up a little bit. Yeah. So how do I access it? How do I access it? If there's no non, a nonlinear passage of time, right? Mm -hmm. And if that past life exists now here in this moment, yes. how would a person access that past life in that moment? Is it just a matter of spiritual uh, awareness, spiritual attunement to what your soul is capable of, or would you explain it another way? I have to say that my answer is probably not going to be a favorite. Oh, um, I love it. Do it. Let's do it. Well, I'm just going to be direct about that. Uh, our our individual lives, which we do call past lives, and I and I think past life regression is is, is very effective and wonderful work. So I don't want to discount any of those concepts. But our other lives are uh, we're already we're already communicating with them. You know, and a, a second part of this is that in each individual life, with each choice you make, you create another life. So the amount of lives that are that are happening really are are infinite. But my answer, which which isn't always the you know, because I love one, two, three, do this right, and this is how it's going to go. But the answer is, you have to step into the possibility. You have to let go of the limitation that you can't. And that's really the only thing stopping you. And I, I remember the first time I, I very directly interacted with another one of my lives. I didn't even know I was, I didn't even understand that that was what was happening. I thought that this, I'm a medium and I communicate with those on the other side. And I remember uh, running into a, a spirit and I was like, well, you look really familiar. And she was a little tough on me. And I was like, well, I, okay, I, who are you? You know, like what's going on? And, you know, and she was kind of, you know, you don't have time to do this. You got to keep going. You got to do this. You got to do this now. Don't put it off another day. And I was like, wow, this is interesting. And I was looking at her and all of a sudden it hit me. I'm like, I feel like you're me. And she just, she was like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, but you have curly hair and you're wearing a skirt. That doesn't match. Like, that doesn't match my MO. I have straight hair and I will never wear a skirt. Here I am today. Half the time my hair is curly and I wear skirts. So I get it. It was a past um, life. It was, was, it was another girl. life. Yeah. yeah. And some of our other lives are very aware of all of the lives. They're very aware and they're able to easily navigate it because they're not in an existence or in a pattern where they were taught the limitation that this is the only one. Whereas another life was taught, this is the only one, here's the limitation. So here I am being taught the limitation and here's another one of my lives who is taught, oh yeah, you can talk to any life you want at any point. Because if you told a child that from birth, they would just embrace it. And she was visiting me to say, hey, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Because in essence, all of the lives affect each other. And there are going to be days where you are ramped up and joyous for no particular reason. That's going to resonate through all of the lives. There's going to be days where you're uh, saddened and burdened for no reason. That's going to resonate through all of the lives. Mm -hmm. So my answer to that one is indeed, you have to first be able to let go of the limitation. Yeah. I think we're going to have to another episode, my friend, just on <clears throat> this aspect of past lives because it's really unraveling some pieces in me. But let's thank you for answering that, and I hope that gave value to people listening. So let's let's step up, step up a little bit from the deepness of this, and let's talk now about. I have one more question, and then I want to get into some tools around cord cutting and what we what we've talked about thus far. But before I get to that, I want to ask you, my friend around your opinion on if this is, if you agree with this, on collective courts, on collective events, collective group consciousness and and events that are happening in the world. So let me give an example to make this to make this easier to understand. So you know everything that's happened with the pandemic, everything that's happening with Ukraine, everything that's happening with you know going into a re possible recession. You know, it's very easy, especially if you watch the news or you 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 spend any time connecting to groups of people. Things activate. Things activate that that I've noticed sometimes are a bit more than just one on one. It's more one to the group. So I'm wondering, one, what are your thoughts on sort of group 
chords and group consciousness and how that impacts us and how do we move through that? Group consciousness is absolutely, uh, absolutely seen, especially in the pandemic that, you know, I have moments where even as, even as a, a spiritual person, I still have that human moment of, did we just go through that? We just went through that, like a movie just played out. And so it is a little bit surreal, but I think it's best explained in that on the other side, there are, it's like an, it's like a multidimensional spider web, right? And at every intersection is a soul and a piece of that soul goes down to earth and lives a life. Meaning those that are closest to you on the spider web are part of your, are your soulmates, right? And then part of your soul group. And then that, and then that kind of weakens as it goes out because you're not going to interact, you know, tightly with, 7,000 people, uh, just the, the people closest to you. But those that are on the outside edges of your soul group are also on the outside edges or the inside of another soul group. Yeah. So you have these, it's almost sort of sectioned off, but it's a Venn diagram all over the place. Tapestry. You know, yeah, it's a tapestry. And so in a situation like this, Where in essence, Mother Earth says, guess what? We're going to ramp up and we're going to ramp up hard. Are you ready? And the vibration ramps in such a fast pace, which Mm. is what happened with the pandemic. It left the entire spider web shaking. Impacted, yeah. Yeah. And it it shook as a whole. So it wasn't. So if you take that spider web and you spread it all over the globe, which is kind of close, right? Wrap it around the globe. It's for the most part, that that kind of logically makes sense. This is where we get stuck with form, but it it logically makes sense. Most of the people in your soul group are are within your vicinity and your your general area. When Mother Earth takes a deep breath in and expands very quickly, which is what happened with the pandemic, that whole spider web all over the globe Impacted. is going to shake. Yeah, and it's going to shake. And I'll just add to this that that awareness of that, which we'll get to in the tools here in a second, but not only does that awareness of that help to soothe it in, it, in itself, like it's just seeing our connection to the tapestry and to earth itself. I would also say that we can actually connect directly back to the earth because it's, I've found it's often the unconscious suppression of this connection that is causing the most resistance. So there's two options here with this collective um, collective cord, collective tension is I can connect to all the individual parts of the tapestry, that being all the people. It's going to take me a long time. It's probably going to take a lot of energy. Or I could also connect straight, straight to the soul that is the earth itself, right? She is a powerful soul that we also in many ways have cords to. So I found a solution. I want to get your thoughts on this. And I think this is why grounding can be so powerful for us is connecting straight into the the soul that is the earth itself, right? With an intention of, hey, today I want to cleanse some of the energy that's coming up around the lesson that is the pandemic or the lesson that is the, the war in Ukraine or the lesson that is, you know, insert crisis here. And that in itself can be very healing and soothing. Do you, do you agree with that, my friend? Absolutely. Absolutely. When she took a, that deep breath, right? And expanded. Those grounding cords in every single purse, everyone's grounded to Mother Earth. Maybe not strongly, maybe weakly, but everyone is is grounded. You have to be in order to be in the agreed upon reality. But when she took that deep breath, it's almost as if all of us shot off the planet with our cords extending and we're now 50 feet away. And we have a choice. Do we stay 50 feet away and we flail or do we work our way back to Mother Earth? That's what this 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 hard, hard, difficult time was. And it's the working back to Mother Earth. It's you have to find yourself. You have to you have to reconnect with what's meaningful to you and to your core in order to get back to that solid grounding. And yeah, it's 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 quite a chore (laughs) and you can sort of see i have so much compassion for 
people out there, you can see why so many are lost, right? It's because they, yeah. you know, and this is a whole other conversation, but we're spending so much of our energy on the earth, but in the negative polarity, right? The sort of taking away from her and the ignoring of her and the suppression of her and the destroying of her. So it's, you can see how so many people are lost in that regard because it's on the other side of that polarity. But Let's let's finish this chat today, Isabel, with some some tools and tips for cord cutting. And and we've spoken about, about a few of them already, right? Connecting to the earth would be one, the grounding piece. We've spoken about the the conscious awareness of it, just the observation of the thing that's moving through us so we can make a choice. What are, in your opinion, your experience? What are some other tools that we can use to help us with energetic cords? I'll give you one of my favorite tools and, 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 you know, I have a handful of them, but here's my favorite one. When it comes to being connected in a soul contract and having that energetic cord connected, you are being fed through that cord, a steady flow of energy. And when it's time to cut that cord and break that, when the soul contract ends, but the cord has not necessarily cut you will start to become even more heightened and aware of that energy. So the two steps that I tell people to to do, and I'm going to preface this by saying, only do this as long as you are safe, everyone around you is safe, and and you're balanced because some soul contracts can be violent, some soul contracts can be um, dangerous. So, um, and most aren't, but for the sake of those that are in situations that are, I always like to throw that in there. With that said, here's the two steps. Number one, when the pattern, first observe, observe until you can see the pattern that's causing the trouble. When you can finally observe that pattern, allow the pattern to happen. Don't try to stop it. Allow the pattern to happen again, as long as you're safe. Allow the pattern to happen and then when it's done and the pattern has has the situation has completed and you can walk away from the situation i want you to sit down and i want you to imagine somebody very close to you very near dear to you somebody that you would care for like like an an elderly grandparent or a child or someone who um you would feel sort of loving and protective and parental over and i want you to imagine yourself doing that pattern to that person. The act of walking through that is difficult, but it brings an, a, a secondary layer to what's going on. It'll bring awareness that is hard to describe. So for example, let's say, yeah, let's say you're in a, in a volatile situation. It's, it, it's, it, let's just say it's a, a verbally a difficult relationship, right? You're safe. Cause again, I'm, I'm feel very strongly about that, but let's say I'm safe. I'm in a verbal situation and the verbal, and I start to recognize these verbal patterns and I've now finally woken up to it uh, because it's time for me to go. I will give myself the space to let the verbal pattern happen and complete this, like complete the cycle. Okay. I will walk away from that situation, sit down and think about, for example, one of my kids or my grandmother, right? Or someone like that. And then role play me doing that pattern to them. What that's going to do is it's going to show you how it's going to show you exactly what you're receiving, exactly what you're receiving and give you the space to determine how you would like to receive that in the future. I love this process, my friend, and it brings up two things in me. It brings up one, the power of compassion, the power of compassion for, you know, the interaction between the two people with the, with the cord and compassion for yourself, because there's pieces of you that you're still moving through. It also brings up the role of the inner child here too, because you could, that, that inner piece that you were talking about that you're imagining you know, the first place I go to is your inner child using that, having that interaction, that cord that you're using to, to, that you want to break and you know, connecting that to your inner child. And, and because when you connect to the inner child, I've noticed in the work that I've done with it, it's, that's where a lot of that love can be cultivated. A lot of that compassion can be cultivated because 
how do you approach children in your life ideally when they when they're in pain you approach them with that compassion with that unconditional love with that patience with that trust so i think what you're explaining is where i think a lot of inner child work can come into this to this cord cutting conversation do you agree with that it absolutely can and the the kind of interesting reason why i say somebody else other than your inner child um i think the inner child work is really important because you do have to go back to the inner child work and say you know what i i see you and i'm going to help you to understand you know as an inner child but the reason i say to do to another is because sometimes there's a pattern that has been set from birth and even ourselves doing it back to our inner child will still accept it. We'll still receive it. And sometimes it's not as difficult to do to ourselves as it is to others. And it's an act of, of walking through imagining. Obviously, we're never going to take that situation and put it on somebody else. But the act of imagining what that would be like brings an incredible awareness to what we have been receiving. But with the inner child work, it's a matter of then turning around and helping that child to adjust the patterns yeah, that allowed you. Yeah, within you that allowed you to walk into the soul contract. Yeah. It's such a it's such a beautiful nuanced uh <laughs> juiciness of pieces here that it 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 reminds me, my friend, that it helps us shift out of the victim archetype as well. I often speak about in this show that within this kind of healing work, especially within cord cutting and what we've been talking about today, it's so easy to stay in the victim. It's so, so easy to to just say that everything is happening to us, right? And there's nothing that I can do, but I don't think there's anything we've talked about today that is that, is that right? This, this whole topic is all about, you know, taking your power back, right? And not adding more blame and shame onto the other person because they you know, they have a role too, but and not disregarding their actions that they need to take responsibility for. But this is a, this is this whole cord cutting conversation is really coming back into your power to change, to 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 make a shift, to take back something that maybe you felt for a long time that you don't deserve or you're unworthy of, right? Exactly, and a couple of things I like to to really state when we talk about cord cutting and and soul contracts is on one side we can say you know we signed up for the contract and things like this but that does not negate you know how difficult it is and there are people that walk through things in life that are horrific absolutely horrific and so we honor that we honor that their experiences indeed you know, uh, uh, quite a struggle. So I do like to always honor that and that, you know, never make light of it on my, on my end. Um, and I love, this is why I love talking to you because you don't as well. Like you're, you're, you're in that space where it's this deep understanding and compassion for others. That, that part is really important to me that the other part that is really important to me as well is that, we have to remember the role exactly what you said they're playing a role and you're pl you're in this role together for a reason and sometimes it's the it's the frog in boiling water i'm sure yeah. you've heard that yeah, right but you don't um, know it you just it's constant gradual sort of so you don't see the actual bigger picture yeah getting into these soul contracts can be a very gradual you know, step. And so I like to remove the victim as well, the victim mentality around it as well. And instead say, it's a contract, the contract, when it ends, next, we support an individual on what it takes for them to be able to step out of it. Mm. Well, Isabel, as always, this chat has actually left me with more questions and a deeper urge to have a further conversation with you, my friend. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. I hope that this has given some guidance to people out there listening that, you know, within this spiritual conversation, sometimes we can get a bit confused with these kinds of topics and we don't know where to start. I hope today has given you a lot of places to start, has given you a lot of practical tips, but also 
deeper spiritual mystical understandings to take this idea of cord cutting and why it's important in your life, especially right now with everything that we're going through. Isabel, I love you very much. Thank you for your time. Is there anything else you want to share before we wrap it up? I love you too. You are such a dear, amazing soul. And I'm so grateful that you're out here doing this work. And just a gentle reminder to love yourself a little bit more today than you did yesterday. Mm, What a beautiful message. All right, lovely listeners. Have a wonderful evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Until next time here on the show, both Isabel and myself love you unconditionally. And we'll see you again soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Love Antenna with me, your host, Harrison. If you gain value or this episode hit your heart, please remember to share this out with a friend, a family member, or a lover. You can also leave your love over on Apple Reviews and Spotify Star Feedback, and this helps me spread my frequency to more souls in need. Finally, if you want to connect with me deeper, want to reach out, interested in coaching, please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn at Harrison Ma, Ma spelled M-E-A-G-H-E-R sending you so much love. Welcome to Transforming 45, the podcast that celebrates the incredible power of passionate voices. I'm your host, Lisa Boat. Join me in conversation with heart-led humans who share their deeply personal stories of transformation. Transforming 45 is here to uplift, connect, and remind you that it's never too late to write your next chapter. So get ready to be inspired, empowered, and transformed. Join me in this community where through powerful storytelling, we heal and reclaim our inherent magic. Electric acid. Are you a fan of classic cinema or a young person who wants to discover the best films of all time? Do these legendary movies still hold up? On the Generation Film Podcast, two guys who grew up when movies dominated the culture share a great film with a panel of young movie lovers and see how it plays for today's generation. We discuss changes in storytelling styles, representation, and the making of each film, its initial reception, and how its meaning has changed over the years. Join us as we explore cinema classics across generations on Generation Film. Electric acid.